Lots of kids dream about an exciting career filled with supersonic flight, space travel, and worldwide recognition. But not Norman Augustine. As a boy, he had more earthly and local aspirations. Luckily for the rest of the world, a very astute high school teacher changed that. The pictures that adorn the walls of Norman Augustine's home may tell the story of a man whose success has allowed him to shake hands with presidents and befriend astronauts. But he still recognizes his humble beginnings and simpler plans as a teenager. When I was a junior in high school, a junior a teacher called me into his office and asked what I was going to do when I got out of high school. I told him I wanted to be a forest ranger, and uh, he told me that that was the wrong answer. He got very upset with me and thought that I should go to college, and no one in my family had ever gone to college. So Augustine left Denver, Colorado to attend Princeton University. He ended up majoring not in forestry, but aerospace engineering. By the time he graduated in 1957, the American space age had begun, and Augustine's career took off. He moved to Southern California to do rocketry research and later developed cutting-edge anti-ballistic missiles for the Army. After joining Martin Marietta, Augustine rose swiftly through the ranks, managing ever larger teams until he found himself in the upper reaches of the company. He attributes much of his success in business to his technical training. Engineering is such a great foundation for business or so many other things. Is it, it teaches uh, discipline, it teaches hard work, it, it teaches strategic thinking. It's, it's very logical, very unforgiving. Augustine was at the helm when Martin Marietta merged with Lockheed to become Lockheed Martin in 1995. The merger resulted in the world's largest defense contractor. But at the time, the world was changing. Augustine faced a huge challenge. When the Cold War came to an end, uh, there were many people who said we'd lose 60% uh, of the people in our industry and three quarters of the companies, and that proved to be about right. And it was those companies that were willing to change, uh, that had a broad perspective and were able to think strategically that survived. So the company seized new opportunities, like their contract with NASA to handle launch operations for all space shuttle flights. They also found opportunities beyond aerospace, like their contract with the U.S. Postal Service to use Lockheed Martin technology for tracking deliveries. Through these times, Augustine attributes much of his success to recognizing it in others. I'm a pretty good judge of people, and I've always been able to surround myself with, with enormously talented people. Uh, the, the team we built there uh, that won so many programs and increased the company uh, in size uh, didn't happen by accident. People who are afraid to surround themselves with talent for fear that talent will take their job uh, are t making a dreadful mistake in my opinion. That's a sure way to fail. Whether it's running an aerospace company, spending nine years as chairman of the Red Cross, or serving as national president of the Boy Scouts of America, Augustine's success as a leader can be summarized by what he calls Augustine's Laws. Now in its sixth edition, the book is a must read for would-be executives, but Augustine gives credit for weathering his tough times to another popular author. I've always had an interest in Shakespeare, and there's nobody in the world who ever understood people better than Shakespeare, and Shakespeare uh, uh, teaches a lot of business lessons that uh, uh, one could apply to circumstances like that. An avid woodworker, traveler, and collector, even his hobbies reflect Augustine's intensity and precision. And in retirement, Augustine has taken up many new causes, like chairing a major National Academies report recommending ways America can remain competitive in an ever-globalizing economy. He says it'll take an investment not in missiles, but in math. We need to set up a system whereby young people leaving high school and college would rather teach science and math in grades K through 12 than they would want to be a professional basketball player or a professional football player. And while the photos on Augustine's wall may be proof positive that his modest aspirations in the forest led to great accomplishments in the stars, even he sometimes looks back on it with disbelief. When I think back on my career, uh, I played a tiny part in putting uh, 12 of my friends uh, on the moon and bringing them back alive. And, uh, you know, what more could you ask in life than to be able to say something like that? How, how many people in their career 
could say that they played a tiny part in something so magnificent. The 2007 Bauer Award for Business Leadership is presented to Norman Augustine, retired chairman and CEO of Lockheed Martin Corporation, for his leadership of Lockheed Martin and his extensive public service focused on U.S. science and technical leadership and the implications this leadership has for U.S. economic competitiveness, driven by research, innovation, and improved science and math education.